Welcome to the Southern Craft Wood Shop. I'm Wes Lewis. A while back we did a video on a couple different construction methods for hive bodies and supers. In this video I'm going to go over the steps that I use to build a bottom board. But before we begin let's talk about safety. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones to know and understand your power tools and how to operate them safely. Please follow all procedures and guidelines in doing so. For this project we're going to be using three quarter inch cypress. Uh, I'm using one by six and the first thing I want to do is I want to set my fence up to where I am just shaving a little bit of the factory edge off of one side. And we'll make a dust cut, then we'll flip it around. Now we're going to set our fence at three and a quarter. And we're going to flip our material around and put the side that we just cut against the fence. I'm going to set our three and a quarters to the side for just a minute. Now I'm going to set my fence to an inch and seven eighths and that's going to be our sides and our back. Now that we have our rips made it's time to move over to the miter saw. Normally at the miter saw I'd work off of an adjustable bump stop but we just purchased a new sliding compound miter saw and it's considerably larger than what was sitting here. I actually had to extend my table out and this is a temporary fix just to get me through in the short time. Uh, but since today we only have two sides, I'm just gonna go old school on those and measure each individual piece out. And then in a second, we'll show you a different way to set up a bump stop. Well, that takes care of our two 22 inch side pieces. Now I'm going to use a fixed bump stop to cut our back and our bottom pieces. I'll screw this directly down to the table and I'll use the screw on the end for a micro adjustment. And I'm going to use a piece of scrap material to set that up. Now with our bump stop set up, we're ready to cut the rest of our pieces. Now we'll come back over to the table saw. We need to make a dado cut in both our sides and our back, and I've got our stack dado set up just a hair over three quarters of an inch wide. I've got a three quarter inch spacing from the edge of the cut back to the rip fence, and I've got our blade raised to a quarter inch deep cut. That's going to leave us one inch worth of material after the cut between the two pieces. Now with the dado still set up to make a quarter inch deep cut, we need to make a rabbit joint cut in the back of both of our sides. From this point forward, your sides will become lefts and rights. Now to do this, I've set up a bump stop on the fence and I'll be using my miter gauge. Now we need to cut quarter inch by three eighths rabbits in the boards that'll make up our bottom board. To do that, I've installed a sacrificial fence and I've raised our dado to make a three eighths deep cut. Now, five of these boards will receive a rabbit on both sides. Two of them will only receive the rabbit on one side. Now the last cut we'll make is a 45 degree cut on the top front edge of the sides. We'll be using a combination of two inch number eight deck screws, as well as some inch and a quarter staples for assembly. Now I want to lay out and pre-drill with a countersink bit before we get started. I'm gonna find the bottom, which is the three eight side, put it down. I'm gonna use my other side. I'm gonna give myself a line that will fall right in the middle 
of my dado. I'm going to give myself a mark an inch and seven eighths from the front, inch and seven eighths from the back. Then I am going to measure from the back 11 and a quarter. Now I also want to get one in this top corner for the back. To do that, I'm going to use that side, give myself a mark at three quarter, give myself another mark at three quarter. That was backwards for y'all, sorry. Then I am going to put a hole right in the center of that. Now I'm going to drill my marked locations. So my first step in assembly, I'm going to take my back piece. It's got the rabbit on one side, square cut on the other. I'm going to lock it into my back. They're cut the same length, so they should be flush on both sides. Now this is the one and only place that I'm going to use glue. Because you've got dissimilar grain directions and you are definitely going to have quite a bit of expansion and contraction. The glue will not do you any good in any of the other joints. Well, I actually did fib to you just a little bit. I am going to put a little bit of glue between our back and our side but not on any of the bottom pieces. I didn't do a very good job recording that last segment. The screw holding the side to the back piece, I went ahead and ran in tight. Don't over tighten it. The screw holding the bottom into the side, I left it a little bit loose. And the reason for that, if it's too tight, it's not going to want to slide down in there. Now at this point, and this is a little awkward for me trying to record and put this together and give you all a good view. But I'm just going to come down one slat at a time and I'm using a penny for spacer and I'm doing that because this is going to be expanding and contracting quite a bit. You want to give that wood somewhere to go. If you don't, it will blow out the front or push the back off of the bottom board. All right, now I'm going to stop right there for just a second. I'm going to try to do this where you can see. All right, so we've got all the way to the middle. You can see that we do have a screw that we need to put in right here. Hopefully I'm recording this right. I am gonna go ahead and sink that one a little snug. Pull these boards back tight together. And while we're here, let's go ahead and tighten this one up as well. Now 
Now this last board, I'm going to need to go back to the table saw. And we're going to need to trim off about an eighth of an inch. All right, we're back from the saw. Let's see how we did. Close enough. All right, now I am going to leave the pennies in for just a couple more steps. Now in the center, everywhere except for where I've already got screws, I'm going to shoot one staple as close to the center of the board as I can. Now forgive me if this looks awkward, it kind of is. It's not really that bad when you're not trying to video. Penny gives you somewhere around a sixteenth of an inch for those bottom boards to expand and contract. And that screw and staple at each one of these boards will allow that individual board to move, but it won't push completely from side to side. Now let's see if a box will fit on here. I believe it will. I guess we just need a lid now, but I think I'll save that for the next episode. If you want to download these prints, you can go to the southerncraftwoodshop.com and look in the blog section. And also, I'll leave a link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching.